The history of Cornwall begins with the pre-Roman inhabitants, including speakers of a Celtic language, Common Britonic, that would develop into Southwestern Britonic and then the Cornish language. Cornwall was part of the territory of the tribe of the Dumnoni that included modern-day Devon and parts of Somerset. After a period of Roman rule, Cornwall reverted to rule by independent Romano-British leaders and continued to have a close relationship with Brittany and Wales as well as Southern Ireland, which neighboured across the Celtic Sea. After the collapse of Dumnonia, the remaining territory of Cornwall came into conflict with neighbouring Wessex. By the middle of the 9th century, Cornwall had fallen under the control of Wessex, but it kept its own culture. In 1337, the title Duke of Cornwall was created by the English monarchy, to be held by the king's eldest son and heir. Cornwall, along with the neighbouring county of Devon, maintained stannery institutions that granted some local control over its most important product, tin. But by the time of Henry VIII most vestiges of Cornish autonomy had been removed as England became an increasingly centralised state under the Tudor dynasty. Conflicts with the centre took place with the Cornish Rebellion of 1497 and Prayer Book Rebellion of 1549. By the 18th century, Cornwall was incorporated into the Kingdom of Great Britain along with the rest of England and the Cornish language had gone into steep decline. The Industrial Revolution brought huge change to Cornwall, as well as the adoption of Methodism among the general populace, turning the area non-conformist. Decline of mining in Cornwall resulted in mass emigration overseas and the Cornish diaspora, as well as the start of the Celtic revival and Cornish revival which resulted in the beginnings of Cornish nationalism in the late 20th century. Cornwall's early medieval history, in particular the early Welsh and Breton references to a Cornish king named Arthur, have featured in such legendary works as Geoffrey of Monmouth's Historia Regum Britanniae, predating the Arthurian legends of the Matter of Britain, pre-Roman Cornwall, late Stone Age. The present human history of Cornwall begins with the reoccupation of Britain after the last Ice Age. The inhabitants may have been related to the Iberians who occupied Spain and Portugal. The upland areas of Cornwall were the parts first open to settlement as the vegetation required little in the way of clearance. They were perhaps first occupied in Neolithic times. Many megaliths of this period exist in Cornwall and prehistoric remains in general are more numerous in Cornwall than in any other English county, except Wiltshire. The remains are of various kinds and include menhurst, barrows and hut circles. Bronze Age Cornwall and neighbouring Devon had large reserves of tin, which was mined extensively during the Bronze Age by people associated with the beaker culture. Tin is necessary to make bronze from copper, and by about 1600 BC the West Country was experiencing a trade boom driven by the export of tin across Europe. This prosperity helped feed the skillfully wrought gold ornaments recovered from Wessex culture sites. There is evidence of a relatively large-scale disruption of cultural practices around the 12th century BCE that some scholars think may indicate an invasion or migration into southern Britain. Iron Age around 750 BCE The Iron Age reached Britain, permitting greater scope of agriculture through the use of new iron plows and axes. The building of hill forts also peaked during the British Iron Age. During broadly the same time, Celtic cultures and peoples spread across the British Isles. During the British Iron Age Cornwall, like all of Britain south of the Firth of Forth was inhabited by Celts known as the Britons. The Celtic language spoken at the time, Common Britonic, eventually developed into several distinct tongues, including Cornish. The first account of Cornwall comes from the Sicilian Greek historian Diodorus Siculus, supposedly quoting or paraphrasing the 4th century BCE geographer Pythias, who had sailed to Britain. The inhabitants of that part of Britain called Balerian from their intercourse with foreign merchants are civilized in their manner of life. They prepare the tin, working very carefully the earth in which it is produced. 
Here then the merchants buy the tin from the natives and carry it over to Gaul, and after traveling overland for about 30 days, they finally bring their loads on horses to the mouth of the Rhone. Claims have been made that the Phoenicians traded directly with Cornwall for tin. There is no archaeological evidence for this and modern historians have debunked earlier antiquarian constructions of the Phoenician legacy of Cornwall, including belief that the Phoenicians even settled Cornwall. Toponymy by the time that classical written sources appear, Cornwall was inhabited by tribes speaking Celtic languages. The ancient Greeks and Romans used the name Balerian or Balerium for the southwest tip of the island of Britain. But the late Roman source for the Ravenna cosmography introduces a place name Puro Coronavish, the first part of which seems to be a misspelling of Juro. This appears to indicate that the tribe of the Cornovii, known from earlier Roman sources as inhabitants of an area centered on modern Shropshire, had by about the 5th century established a power base in the southwest. The tribal name is therefore likely to be the origin of Kerno or later Kerno used for Cornwall in the Cornish language. John Morris suggested that a contingent of the Cornovii was sent to southwest Britain at the end of the Roman era to rule the land there and keep out the invading Irish but this theory was dismissed by Professor Philip Payton in his book Cornwall, A History. The Cornish Cornovii may even be a completely separate tribe, taking their name from the horn shape of the peninsula. The English name Cornwall comes from the Celtic name, to which the Old English word Wheelis, foreigner, is added. In pre-Roman times, Cornwall was part of the Kingdom of Dumnonia, and was later known to the Anglo-Saxons as West Wales. To distinguish it from North Wales, Roman Cornwall. During the time of Roman dominance in Britain, Cornwall was rather remote from the main centres of Romanization. The Roman road system extended into Cornwall, but the only known significant Roman sites are three forts. Tregear near Nantstallen was discovered in early 1970s. The other two found more recently at Restormal Castle, Los Withiel and a fort near to St Andrew's Church in Calstock. A Roman-style villa was found at Magall Farm near Camborne. Pottery and other evidence suggesting the presence of an ironworks have been found at the undisclosed location near St. Austell, Cornwall. Experts say the discovery challenges the belief that Romans did not settle in the county and stopped in neighbouring Devon. Furthermore, the British tin trade had been largely eclipsed by the more convenient supply from Iberia. Only a few Roman milestones have been found in Cornwall, two have been recovered from around Tintagel in the north, one at Mynheer Farm near the hill fort at Carnbrea, Redruth, and another two close to St. Michael's Mount, one of which is preserved at Brieg Parish Church. The stone at Tintagel Parish Church bears an inscription to Imperator Caesar Licinius, and the other stone at Trethevi is inscribed to the Imperial Caesars Trebonianus Gallus and Volutianus. According to Elia Cuto and Fluriot, however, Cornwall remained closely integrated with neighboring territories by well-traveled sea routes. Floriot suggests that an overland route connecting Padstow with Foy and Los Withiel served, in Roman times, as a convenient conduit for trade between Gaul and the western parts of the British Isles. Archaeological sites at Chysorster Ancient Village and Carn Union West Penworth in the Isles of Scilly demonstrate a uniquely Cornish courtyard, house, architecture built in stone of the Roman period entirely distinct from that of southern Britain, yet with parallels in Atlantic Ireland, North Britain and the continent, and influential on the later development of stone-built fortified homesteads known in Cornwall as rounds, post-Roman and medieval periods. In the wake of the Roman withdrawal from Great Britain in about 410, Saxons and other Germanic peoples were able to conquer and settle most of the east of the island over the next two centuries.
In the West Devon and Cornwall held out as the British Kingdom of Dumnonia. Dumnonia had close cultural contacts with Christian Ireland, Wales, Romano-Celtic Brittany and Byzantium via the West Atlantic trade network, and there is exceptional archaeological evidence for late antique trade in contacts of the stronghold of Tintagel in Cornwall. The Breton language is closer to Cornish than to Welsh, showing the close contacts between the areas. Relationship with Wessex The early kings of Wessex in particular are notable for their prevalence of Brythonic names and therefore care should be exercised in assuming a stark ethnic antipathy between emergent British and English identities and culture, rather a struggle for dominance of warring elites more or less aligned with Eastern Germanic and Western Romano-Celtic cultures. Atlantic Brythons were often recorded in alliance with Scandinavian forces such as the Danes or Normans in Brittany, up to the period of the Norman Conquest. In the early 8th century, Cornwall was probably a subdivision of Dumnonia, and the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle records that in 710 Geraint, King of Dumnonia, fought against Ein, King of Wessex. The Analcambria states that in 722 the Battle of Heheel among the Cornishmen was won by the Britons. In the view of the historian Thomas Charles Edwards, this probably indicates that Dumnonia had fallen by 722, and that the British victory of that year against Wessex secured the survival of the new Kingdom of Cornwall for another 150 years. There were intermittent battles between Wessex and Cornwall for the rest of the 8th century, and Cuthred, King of Wessex, fought against the Cornish in 743 and 753. However, according to John Reuben Davies, Dumnonia ceased to exist around the beginning of the 9th century, but the Kingdom of Cornwall, on the other hand, remained as an independent British territory in the face of pressure from Wessex cut off from fellow Britonic speakers in Wales and Brittany by the sea and the West Saxons. In 814 King Egbert of Wessex ravaged Cornwall from the east to the west, and the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle records that in 825 the Cornish fought the men of Devon. In 838 the Cornish in alliance with Vikings were defeated by the West Saxons at the Battle of Hingston Down. This was the last recorded battle between Cornwall and Wessex, and resulted in the loss of Cornish independence. In 875, the Annal Cambria record that King Dungarth of Cornwall drowned, but Alfred the Great had been able to go hunting in Cornwall a decade earlier, and Dungarth was probably an under-king. Constec became the first bishop of Cornwall to profess obedience to the Archbishop of Canterbury, and in the same period the Bishop of Sherborne was instructed to visit Cornwall annually to root out the errors of the Cornish Church. Further indications that Cornwall was becoming subject to Wessex in the middle of the 9th century. In the 880s Alfred the Great was able to leave estates in Cornwall in his will. William of Malmesbury, writing around 1120, says that in about 927 King Ethelston of England expelled the Cornish from Exeter and fixed Cornwall's eastern boundary at the River Tamer. T.M. Charles Edwards dismisses William's account as an improbable story, on the ground that Cornwall was by then firmly under English control. John Reuben Davies sees the expedition as the suppression of a British uprising, which was followed by the confinement of the Cornish beyond the Tamer and the creation of a separate bishopric for Cornwall. Cornwall now acquired Anglo-Saxon administrative features such as the Hundred System. Unlike Devon, Cornwall's culture was not anglicised. Most people still spoke Cornish, and place names are still mainly Britonic. In 944 Ethelston's successor, Edmund I, styled himself King of the English and ruler of this province of the Britons. The antiquarian William Camden wrote in his book Britannia in 1607, As for those Cornwallians, although they stoutly bent all the force together in defence of their country, yet sooner became they subject to the Saxons, as who neither matched then in number, neither was their country sufficiently fenced by nature to defend them. 
The Cornish Church the first centuries after the Romans left are known as the Age of the Saints. As Celtic Christianity and a revival of Celtic art spread from Ireland, Wales and Scotland into Great Britain, Brittany, and beyond. According to tradition the area was evangelized in the 5th and 6th centuries by the children of Breach and Brachaniog and saints from Ireland. Cornish saints such as Piran, Mary Essek, or Geraint exercised a religious and arguably political influence. They were often closely connected to the local civil rulers and in some cases were kings themselves. There was an important monastery at Bodmin and sporadically, Cornish bishops are named in various records. By the 880s a more Saxon priests were being appointed to the church in Cornwall and they controlled some church estates like Poulton. Kyelwick and Landwithen, and Law Hilton. Eventually they passed these over to Wessex kings. However, according to Alfred the Great's will the amount of land he owned in Cornwall was very small. West of the Tamer Alfred the Great only owned a small area in the Stratton region, plus a few other small estates around Lifton on Cornish soil east of the Tamer. These were provided to him through the church whose Canterbury-appointed priesthood was increasingly English-dominated. The early organization and affiliations of the church in Cornwall are unclear, but in the mid-9th century it was led by a bishop Constec with his see at Dinareen, a location which has sometimes been identified as Bodmin and sometimes as Gerrans. Constec acknowledged the authority of Sealnith bringing Cornwall under the jurisdiction of the Archbishop of Canterbury. In the 920s or 930s King Athelstan established a bishopric at St. Germans to cover the whole of Cornwall, which seems to have been initially subordinated to the See of Sherborne but emerged as a full bishopric in its own right by the end of the 10th century. The first few bishops here were native Cornish but those appointed from 963 onwards were all English. From around 1027 the see was held jointly with that of Crediton, and in 1050 they were merged to become the Diocese of Exeter. The 11th century in 1013 Wessex was conquered by a Danish army under the leadership of the Viking leader and king of Denmark Swain Forkbeard. Swain annexed Wessex to his Viking empire which included Denmark in Norway. He did not, however, annex Cornwall, Wales and Scotland, allowing these client nations self-rule in return for an annual payment of tribute or Danegeld. Between 1013 and 1035 Cornwall, Wales, much of Scotland and Ireland were not included in the territories of King Canute the Great. The chronology of English expansion into Cornwall is unclear, but it had been absorbed into England by the reign of Edward the Confessor, when it apparently formed part of Godwin's and later Harold's earldom of Wessex. The records of Doomsday Book show that by this time the native Cornish landowning class had been almost completely dispossessed and replaced by English landowners, the largest of whom was Harold Godwinson himself. The Cornish language continued to be spoken, particularly in western mid-Cornwall, and acquired a number of characteristics establishing its identity as a separate language from Breton. However, Cornwall showed a very different type of settlement pattern from that of Saxon Wessex and places continued, even after 1066, to be named in the Celtic Cornish tradition. Post-Norman conquest according to William Worcester, writing in the 15th century. Caddock was a survivor of the Cornish royal line and was appointed as the first Earl of Cornwall by William the Conqueror following the Norman conquest of England. Brian, son of Eudes, Count of Penthever, defeated a second raid in the southwest of England, launched from Ireland by Harold's sons in 1069. Brian was granted lands in Cornwall but by 1072 he had probably returned to Brittany. He died without issue. Much of the land in Cornwall was seized and transferred into the hands of a new Norman aristocracy, with the lion's share going to Robert, Count of Mortain, half-brother of King William and the largest landholder in England after the king.
Some land was held by King William and by existing monasteries, the remainder by the Bishop of Exeter, and a single manor each by Judel of Totnes and Gottschelm, brother of Walter de Clavel. Robert eventually displaced the Cornish Earl though nothing is known of Caddick apart from what William Worcester says four centuries later. Four Norman castles were built in East Cornwall at different periods, at Launceston, Trematon, Restormal and Tintagel. A new town grew up around the castle and this became the capital of the county. On several occasions over the following centuries noblemen were created Earl of Cornwall, but each time their line soon died out and the title lapsed until revived for a new appointee. In 1336, Edward, the Black Prince was named Duke of Cornwall, a title that has been awarded to the eldest son of the Sovereign since 1421. A popular Cornish literature, centered on the religious-themed mystery plays, emerged in the 14th century based around Glasney College, the college established by the Bishop of Exeter in the 13th century.